Good evening and welcome back to the channel. So we've come away to Wensleydale. We're uh, currently probably about probably about two miles away from Hawes um, and I've come with one specific subject in mind and that is Little Owls. Um, so I've been to Paul Fowley's hides in the past. We've done the Red Squirrel hide, uh, the Red Squirrel jumping hide. Um, and so I've got some fantastic photos of those in the past and I've got a video It was one of the first videos that I actually launched on this channel with me and Pops um, And Paul put out on his um, On his social media that the the little owls have got young owlets and they've arrived and they've fledged the nest early So this this morning was the first time they've had the owlets out on the posts so I thought, you know what, I can't miss this opportunity. I absolutely love little owls, they're such little characters. And um, so we've drove over to Halls, we're staving, uh, staving? we're staying in the, the Wheat Sheaf pub, just had a lovely meal, uh, and I'm gonna be getting up nice and early in the morning and meeting Seamus, who I met last time, who's gonna take me to the little owl experience. So come along for the journey and see what I see. What a morning. I have woken up to absolutely spectacular. The sun came up this morning at about half past four. Um, I, I did get up at around that time. I uh, had a little bit longer to sleep because I don't have to be at the hide till um, the meeting point with Seamus is at eight o'clock. So I had a little bit of time to kill this morning. Had a bit of a walk round. The Yorkshire Dales are just incredible. Um, loads of swifts which is really really good to see because you know the numbers of swifts are declining so lots and lots of swifts which is great to see and um, the pub that we're staying in has got um bushes growing up the outside of it and they're absolutely chock-a-block with uh, sparrows another uh, um species that in the past has been on the decline but they they, they you know they, they they appear to be doing better and if if this is just one little small snippet of it they're definitely on the increase hundreds of them in the, in this uh, on the outside of this pub so today the plan is down to um, <coughs> meet Seamus Shane, in the car park of a hotel of which I can't pronounce, I think it's A's Garth or something along those lines. Um, and then he will take us to the location. Got to keep the location uh, under wraps, you know, uh, it's not something that, that Paul Fowley or Seamus wants, wants out there. So I won't be doing any video of the journey to there, but I will be doing video when I arrive there and to share with you the experience of these little owls. Just met up with Seamus, two other gentlemen with us as well. So there's three of us in total that will be in the hides. Seamus will be there for the setup and then he'll leave us be. Um, so we're just driving now to, to the location, park up the car and then go and find the hides, get photographing these little owls. Very excited. What I will say about Yorkshire is it's no wonder that Yorkshire folk call it God's own country. It is beautiful. Every corner we turn is yet another postcard. Every corner we turn, there is another vista that just completely blows your mind. It is an absolutely stunning part of the United Kingdom. And if you've not been to the Yorkshire Dales, you definitely need to get here. Um, and even more of the wildlife, we've just come around the corner and there were brown hairs all over the road. And we had to stop and let them move, which was just incredible to see. I, I, you know, where I live in the Peak District, we don't see many of uh, hairs at all. Um, but here they just seem abundant, so fantastic to see. So we've just had the first visit of the owl. Uh, it's quarter past eight in the morning. Been here only 15 minutes. Stayed for about 12 minutes. It was absolutely fantastic. It just landed on the uh, footpath sign, was digging into the worms that are at the back there. And then it was flitting backwards and forwards between the tree. And you could hear the chicks just calling out from the tree, which was absolutely lovely to hear.
So it's pushed back now, it's on the wall, uh, there's a dry stone wall that runs adjacent to the hide um, and it's on the, the dry stone wall towards the back of the tree. Um, I'm still able to get some video which I'll pop up on the screen now for you to see. What you can probably see is that it, every now and again it's cleaning its beak off on the stones and um, so obviously as it's feeding and then it's feeding its young it keeps its beak nice and clean and it rubs it on the stone. Um, and then it does what little owls do best and that is just stare into the distance. They seem to stare for long periods of time and don't really seem to move. Um, it, it's still incredible, even at, even at distance it's incredible and you, the whole time it's on that dry stone wall you can hear the young calling from the tree. I'm not quite sure how many are in there um, but you can certainly hear them calling. We've actually got two owls now, two owls. I think they're both the adults and um, they've never been on the post at the same time as one's on the post, the other's on the dry stone wall at the back um, and then it's flitting back to the post and then as one goes to the tree to feed the young, the other one's coming into the post, stocking up with a feed and they're kind of rotating the ra themselves around. It'd be great if we could get them both on the same perch though. three we've got three at first i thought there was just two and then a third one just came into the frame and i've got some shots now and some video of the adult coming in and feeding them absolutely fantastic experience these chicks are really really close to now being fledged and, and out of that nest full time um, incredible experience It's really busy now, really busy. It is backwards and forwards. It stays on a post for probably only, I would say a matter of seconds, 30 seconds at the most, until it's got an absolute beak full of the mealworm and then it flies over to the, the tree. The minute it lands in the tree, you can hear the chicks calling to it, demanding that feed um, and, and, and taking the feed from it. As soon as it's given it all the feed up, it's straight back on that post, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Now that's given us some really, really good opportunities for some birds in flight. Um, you can focus on, on the, the owl on the, on the perch. Usually, just before it flies off, it'll probably poo or it, you know, it just it, it, it does a little bit of body language that suggests that it's going to move and then it flies off and then I'm able to track it as it goes back towards the tree. Um, settings wise, when it's on the perch, I'm dropping it down sometimes to as low as 500th of a second, 300th of a second. Um, my aperture, I'm flitting between uh, f4 all the way up to about f6.3. And my ISO I'm leaving on auto. Um, what I've done differently today, um, we've got a, a, quite a dark coloured bird and it's quite a light coloured background. Um, so what I've done this time is rather than underexpose the images, I'm overexposing the images. So I'm using my exposure compensation. Uh, I'm on an eye for plus 0.3 all the way up to about plus 0.7. Um, I've checked the images on the back of the camera. I'm not clipping any of my highlights whatsoever. So what I'll be able to do is to, in post editing, just bring the highlights down a little bit, slide that highlighter bar across, and I probably won't need to touch the shadow bar at all, which means I won't be introducing any noise into the images. Um, keep those images nice and clean. Um, then when the birds are in flight and, and they're going between the post and back up to the tree, I'm pushing it between my base um, shutter speed is about 1600th of a second but I'm going all the way up to about 4000th of a second the w the bit the wings on these little owls they do flap really really fast so if you want to get those nice and sharp probably need to be up to about 4000th of a second
we've actually got the baby owls now and um, the first of the little baby owls has appeared uh, I'm sharing um, this experience with two other gentlemen they're in the hides at the side of me and we've just been out and and um, stocked up the worms on the back of the posts and one of the gentlemen explained that uh, where he'd spotted the, the baby owls in, in the tree at the side and so I've just been keeping an eye on that and I've just seen the first of the baby owls absolutely fantastic calling out all the time to the adult um, and it's nice, I've, I've managed to get some photographs of it which I'll pop up on the screen now for you to see. Wow, the baby owl has just fledged. Um, it climbed up onto a really, really kind of pointy stick right in front of the tree. Um, and it was on there for just a matter of seconds and then it flew off and it's gone down the back of the dry stone wall that sits adjacent to us here and um, so it's just sat down the back of it fantastic but I can still hear them calling from the tree which definitely means there's more than one And that is time up. I've been in the hide now for probably about four and a half hours. Um, I've taken 4,000 images and probably the best part of half an hour's worth of video. Um, so I've got a lot of editing ahead of me. Would I recommend this experience? Paul Fowley's Little Owl Hide experience. Absolutely fantastic. Paul really sets it up well. It was Seamus that was with us today because Paul's away on a, a tour in Finland. Um, but it's a really, really well set up experience. He puts a lot of time and effort into these birds. He, he knows where these birds are. He knows where they're nesting. He knows the, the, the habits of these birds and the, and the feed that he puts out for them. And he maintains that throughout the year to ensure that these birds are in absolute tip top condition. And also they, they show really, really well. Um, so definitely, definitely worth the experience. Get onto Paul Fowley's website. I'll put a link up on the screen now for you to see um, and give it a look. What an incredible experience that was. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I was very lucky um, at home to find a pair of, of uh, little owls and I've photographed them for a while, but I've never been able to get close to them. Um, they've always been very, very skittish, flying away at the, the first bit of uh, disturbance. So the shots that I've had have always been heavily cropped in shots at a long way away. Um, <clears throat> that's just given me the opportunity to be probably 15 meters away from the perches where the bird was flying. Um, 500 mil um, lens I think was absolutely perfect. You certainly don't need any more than that and you could definitely get away with a 400 mil um, and cropping crop in afterwards. The gentleman at the side of me, he was using a 600 mil with a, um, a teleconverter, a 1.4 teleconverter. Personally, I think that was probably a little bit of overkill, but I'm sure he got some fantastic shots. Um, I've just been having a, a, a chat with him now and he's definitely got some nice shots of, of the birds in the uh, up in the tree with the, with the chicks. Um, for me, 500 mil was absolutely perfect. Um, it's 90 pound for half a day in the little owl hide um, which on the surface of it seems quite expensive um, but what I would say is it really is a, a unique experience you get super close to a bird that is you know very difficult to see I would I would hazard a guess that the vast majority of the population I've never even heard of a little owl let alone seen one um, in the past when I've always when I've been photographing them and people have asked me what I'm photographing and I was saying oh it's a little owl they said oh yeah but what kind of breed of owl is it and I said oh, that's what it's called a, a little owl um, so people have definitely not heard of them uh, they're not actually indigenous to this country um, that they were introduced um, from the continent so they're not one of our indigenous owls but um, they've done quite well here and there's quite a strong population of them um, it's definitely worth a visit definitely worth a visit uh, if you've enjoyed this video drop me a like share it on social media 
Um, pop a comment in the in the comment below. I respond to every single comment. Um, so if you want to have a chat with me and, and you know drop me a comment, please do so. Um, if you've got any suggestions of places that I could visit in the future, um, please drop those in the comment as well. Um, I, I love to hear of places um, that people have suggested to me. The gentleman I've just been speaking to, Ian, has just suggested a place in Lincolnshire in Bourne, a hide there. So that's something I'm definitely going to um, have a look at and, and try and check out. So if you've got any suggestions at all of places that you think I should visit, please, please make sure you drop those in the comment. And until next time, ta-ra!